Thank you, Chairman Hensherling and Ranking Member Waters for holding this important hearing today. And thank you to our panelists for your testimony. Mr. Chairman, before asking my questions, I request unanimous consent that my opening statement be made part of today's record. Without objection. My first question is uh, to the Honorable Tim Pawlenty and Ms. Laura Moy. How can a Federal data security standard that creates a floor provide for more consumer financial security while at the same time providing certainty to industries that would need to implement such a standard across all 50 states? Congressman Hinojosa, thank you for your question. Um, for certain sectors, not including financial services and health care and a couple others, they don't have standards currently other than in the 13 states where, or so where they have them. So by Congress creating a floor or a ceiling, but we hope a high standard that is for the whole country, uh, you will lift the game and the expectations and the legal responsibilities for those sectors in those places that don't have a standard currently. And again, this has migrated to international proportions. And I think if the members of this committee knew that Russia or China or semi-state agents were about to compromise the payment system, the electrical grid, you wouldn't say, yeah, let's kick it to the states. Uh, let's let them handle it. Uh, I don't think you'd do that. So uh, whatever you do will be helpful, uh, even if directionally it will be better uh, than what we have now for those sectors that don't have any standard in, in those states. Ms. Moy? Right. So I, I, I would say a couple of things. One is that consumers are protected right now by the Federal Trade Commission's Section 5 authority, and the FTC is enforcing that. Um, as we have heard, they have enforced over 50 cases um, since 2001. Yeah, and, and consumers in the other 47, or, you know, I'm sorry, in 47 states and three jurisdictions are protected by breach notification laws. So there, there are protections existing for consumers. I think setting a floor and not a ceiling, um, as I've mentioned before, there is a clear pattern in terms of what's covered even by the disparate state laws. Uh, so um, in, as, a, as a practical matter, most companies that have to comply with the, with the laws of multiple states are just complying with the strongest, uh, the strongest standard. And, um, and are mostly okay under the other states, including, in fact, many states have a provision that allows, um, that allows a, an entity to, to notify uh, some of the some consumers who have been affected by a breach under the, the standard of another state. But I just I would add on that if we are going to have a federal preemptive standard, as I have said before, it has to be a high one and it has to provide flexibility to adapt to changing technology, not only in terms of what the security standard is, but also in terms of what information is covered by the bill. That is a critical element that I think we might be missing here. Thank you for your response. My second question is addressed to Mr. Jason Oxman and Mr. Brian Dodge. Given the ever-increasing sophistication and sheer number of cyber attacks on our financial institutions and markets, do you think a catastrophic attack which can have severe repercussions on the financial system as a whole is imminent? And what can the Federal Government do to help prevent such an attack or prepare to respond to such an attack? Thank you for the Mr. question, Congressman Hinojosa. Uh, the possibility of such an attack is always on the minds of the payments companies that ETA represents, and preparation for those attacks uh, is, of course, uh, something that is always included uh, in all the operational plans of all the companies that we represent. Our, our sincere hope is that something like that never happens, but we do recognize the important role that the payments infrastructure plays uh, in powering commerce in this country uh, and protecting our customers, be they merchants or consumers. Uh, is always top of mind. So we are focused on that. We are prepared for it. And it is our sincere hope uh, that nothing like that ever comes to pass. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dodge. So in terms of your question about what Congress can do, I think that the focus on data security to avoid such a catastrophic uh, event is incredibly important. What we believe is that, that the, the way that you get yourself to a stronger environment is layers of security. And Congress can help with that by doing as the House did uh, last month in passing information sharing legislation, but also, as we are talking about today, providing clear and strong guidance for businesses on how they should maintain their systems to ensure cyber security, uh, and then providing the flexibility for businesses and for regulators to adapt to that threat over time. There is no doubt that the, 
that the uh, threat is increasing, the level of sophistication is growing extremely fast, and we need to be able to stay up, uh, involved in it. The last point is we need to look to where our greatest vulnerabilities are. And right now our greatest vulnerability from the merchant community is the cards that we accept at the point of sale. They are the weakest technology uh, enabled, uh, security technology enabled in the world today. And when we move to chip technology without the PIN, like has been instituted in the rest of the in industrialized world, we will still have the lowest level of security in the world, and fraud will flow, continue to flow towards us. Thank you. My time has expired, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Time